Hey everyone, I'm Mukesh and in this video, we are going to take a look at how to work with AWS S3 in ASP.NET Core Web API. We'll cover topics like AWS S3 bucket management, how to upload, download and delete files from S3 buckets using ASP.NET Core Web API and so on. Let's get started. This is a part of the ongoing AWS on .NET series on my YouTube channel where we'll be exploring various AWS services and how we as .NET developers can get started with them. This is an AWS sponsored video. I assume that you already have an AWS account registered, but if you don't, you can sign up for the AWS free tier, which is a very generous tier that allows you to experiment with various AWS services. I'll be using the same AWS free tier account for all my open source work, articles and videos. AWS S3 or Simple Storage by Amazon is a highly available and scalable storage solution. The basic concepts attached to this particular service are buckets and objects. Buckets in AWS S3 are like folders or spaces which are given to you by AWS where you would place your objects. Now objects are referred to files. By default, the objects are not accessible by the public. Let's create a simple S3 bucket via the AWS Management Console to get to know this better. Open up your AWS Management Console and type in S3 in the search bar and open up the service. As discussed earlier, we'll start with creating S3 bucket via the Management Console and in the later section of this video, we will see how to create and delete S3 buckets via ASP.NET Core Web API using the AWS SDKs. As you can see here, I already have a couple of S3 buckets created on this account. You might be seeing a slightly different variation of the landing page in case you have not created one earlier. However, click on Create Bucket. Here, let's give a bucket name that should be globally unique and should not contain any special characters or uppercase letters. I'll name mine something like YouTube S3 Demo. As for the AWS region, select the region close to you for optimal transfer speeds. In my case, it is AP South 1. You can leave everything else as it is. By default, AWS blocks all kind of public access into this bucket. Let's keep it this way. Further in the tutorial, we learn a way with .NET to generate URLs to your uploaded files that expire after a given amount of time. You can also add in some tags if you think your S3 bucket is related to any projects or so for better tracking. That's it. Review your changes and hit on create bucket. You can see that the new S3 bucket is created. As a simple exercise, you can play around with the S3 dashboard and try to upload some new files into the newly created bucket. So let's open up our newly created bucket, hit on upload and select add files. Here, let me upload some random files. For example, this PNG and hit on upload. You can see that the upload has succeeded and our file is available in the S3 bucket. Moreover, you can also create folders in the bucket and upload objects to it. Playing around with the S3 dashboard should get you familiar with using it. In the next section, let's see how to build our ASP.NET Core Web API to work with AWS S3. Before getting started with the development work, ensure that you have the following prerequisites installed and set up on your machine, which is Visual Studio IDE for the development, AWS CLI profile that we mentioned earlier, .NET 7 SDK since we are going to build an ASP.NET Core 7 Web API and an AWS account. In this case, a free tier would do. Open up Visual Studio. I'll be using Visual Studio 2022 community as my ID with the latest stable release of .NET SDK 7 installed on my machine. Here, let's create a new project. Select the ASP.NET Core Web API template. Give a name for your project. I'll name it s3demo.api and rename my solution of s3demo. Hit next. For the framework, I'll be selecting .NET 7. I will use controllers for this particular application and hit on create. Once the solution is completely loaded, let's install the required AWS packages, which are for S3 and .NET extensions for registering the required AWS services within the application. Open up Package Manager console and let's install the required packages. You can find the package details and names over at my blog post, which I have linked to in the description of this video. With that done, let's register the AWS services into the .NET applications container. Open up program.cs and let's add in the following code. This line of code loads the required AWS configurations from appsettings.json, which we'll be going to add in some time. The next line essentially adds the S3 service within the application's container. Next, 
Let's add in the required AWS configuration into app settings. Open up app settings and add the following. This mostly includes the credential related configuration, which we have discussed in an earlier video. If you see closely, the profile is default, which is configured already in my machine. And the region is the one that I mentioned earlier, which is AP South one, which is the closest proximity to me. In an earlier section of this video, we had created buckets using the AWS management console. This time around, let's do the same thing with .NET. Let's create a new empty web API controller and name it buckets controller. After that, let's make sure to inject the iAmazon S3 interface into the constructor of this controller. Let's start adding endpoints to a newly created buckets controller. Firstly, an endpoint to create new buckets based on user input. This is a post method wherein the user would have to send us the bucket name to be created within the body of the request. Firstly, we'll check if the bucket name already exists. If it exists, we'll throw a bad request back to the client. Else, we'll use the S3 client instance to create a new bucket based on the bucket name. Once that's done, we'll send back a 201 created status code back to the user. Next, let's add an endpoint that would essentially get a list of S3 buckets available under your AWS account. Here, the client would return back a list of bucket list response, which we would extract the names of each bucket list into a list of string and send back to the client as the response. Finally, an endpoint to delete an empty S3 bucket. The user would simply have to provide the bucket name to this particular API endpoint. The only catch is that the buckets can be deleted only if they are empty. So here is the endpoint uh, code that we'll be writing. Now that the buckets control is completed, let's run the application and test it with Swagger. Firstly, let's create the post endpoint to create a new bucket. I'll just add a random name to the bucket and hit on execute. As you can see, we have received a 201 status code back from the API server. Next, let's see the list endpoint if you're able to fetch all the S3 bucket names that is existing in my S3 account. As you see, these are the available S3 buckets on my AWS account. Similarly, you can also test the delete endpoint. With the bucket operations done, let's get started with the file operations in AWS S3 using ASP.NET Core. The idea will be to create a new API controller named Files Controller, and this API controller will have endpoints that can upload file binaries, taking in a bucket name, folder name, which in AWS term is called as object prefix. The other endpoints include getting the S3 object details, deleting it, and getting a list of objects available per S3 bucket. Let's switch back to Visual Studio. First up, we'll create a new web API controller under the controllers folder and name it Files Controller. Here also, you will need to inject iAmazon interface into the constructor of this controller. With that done, let's understand the requirement of the endpoint wherein the user should be able to upload a new file to a specific S3 bucket. To this new endpoint, the user would pass the file binary, name of the bucket and the folder name which is optional. Let's see the code. So this is going to be a post method where the input is an iform file, the bucket name and an optional parameter for the prefix or the folder name. Firstly, we'll check if the provided bucket name exists in our AWS account. If not, we'll throw back a not found exception. Else, we'll create a new put object request along with the bucket name, key, input stream. So the key is going to be the prefix or the file name of the file that is being passed. And the input stream will be the file binary. Uh, so once that's done, we'll push the request object to the put object API of the S3 client. And finally, we'll return an status code of OK. Next is an endpoint to get a list of files that are available in an AWS S3 bucket. For this, we'll have to create a DDO class that will be returned as a response for this endpoint. Ideally, we need a list of file details, which will be the name of the file, as well as an URL that can be accessed by the public. Create a new folder named models and create a new class under it named 
S3 object DTO. So this will be the properties of the S3 object DTO class where we'll have a name and a pre-signed URL. Before continuing, let's understand about the pre-signed URLs in AWS S3. So as mentioned many times earlier, the objects that you upload in the S3 bucket are secured and cannot be accessed or viewed by the public. But as per our requirement, we need to expose an URL that can open up or preview the S3 object to the public but limit access to about just one minute or so, after which the link should be expired. This is where the pre-signed URLs come into the picture. It's possible to define the amount of time with which the link would expire. So we'll be implementing this as part of the endpoint. Switch back to the files controller and add in the endpoint for getting a list of S3 objects. This is a get endpoint which accepts the bucket name and an optional parameter for prefix. As earlier, We'll first check the validity of the S3 bucket name passed and then create a new request object for listing. We then pass this request object to the S3 client which should return us the list of S3 objects available in that particular S3 bucket. Next, we'll iterate through each of these results and request for pre-signed URLs from the client for each of the objects. Once done, we'll map the data back to our DTO classes and pass it as a response of this endpoint. It's also important to note that the URLs given back by the S3 client will expire in one minute of every new request as per our code. Next will be a simple endpoint that can preview the file in Swagger. Here also we'll be passing the bucket name and the key of the object and we expect the endpoint to return the binary of the uploaded file back to the user. So here is a code for the endpoint. As you can see, this is a get endpoint with the route set as preview and this also expects a bucket name and a key. So as usual, we'll be checking if the bucket exists and handle it. And finally, we'll be passing the bucket name and the key to the S3 client, which will eventually return the file data. Finally, let's delete some objects from our S3 bucket. Let's add in the delete endpoint, which will also expect the bucket name and the name of the object to be passed. Here in the code, we simply pass the input parameters into the S3 client delete object API. That's it. Let's run our application and launch Swagger to perform testing of the file operations. First, let's see the content of the S3 bucket that we had created earlier in this video via AWS Management Console. So this is going to be the get endpoint. So here, we'll have to enter in the bucket name and hit on execute. As you can see, this is the file that we had uploaded earlier and this is the pre-signed URL. I'll just try opening this. So there you go, this is the image that we uploaded earlier. Next, I'll try to upload some file in the same bucket. Let's open up the post endpoint, enter in the bucket name and choose a file. With that done, let me execute this particular request. As you see, we get a response saying that this particular image is uploaded successfully to S3. Let's go back to the list endpoint to check the result now. As you can see, the second file also started appearing in this response. Next is the preview endpoint where I will enter in the bucket name along with the name of a previous file that we uploaded. you'll be able to see the image on Swagger. Finally, let's delete the key using the delete endpoint. As you can see, the file is now deleted. You can find the complete source code of this application that we built in this repository the link to which you can find in the description of this video. The source code of all the upcoming YouTube videos of the .NET on AWS series will be available in this particular GitHub repository. So do not forget to start this repository. Apart from this, here is a text version of the video in case you need it. I will also leave a link to this article in the description section of this video. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Do not forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for the upcoming videos. Thank you guys and I'll see you in the next video shortly.